Hey there, I'm Travis Serio with Robert McNeil and Associates, and I wanted to spend a few minutes with you to show you how to build a ring really quickly in Rhino 7 using the new sub D functionality. And so we don't want to sit and model gemstones because they're pretty well known shapes. What we would like to do is to be able to load some of them quickly. So with this video, I've included two files. One is a toolbar file that has some various standard common gem shapes already loaded up and ready to go. And the other one is a block instance file that hosts all the gem models so that you won't have to make these when you need them. And you can reuse these for other projects. So to get started with both those, I'm just going to drag and drop them onto the viewport here. And I'm going to make sure import is selected instead of open. And I'll say OK. And then with that, you can see that it tells me that we've loaded the toolbar, the RUI, and the block instances file. And so blocks in Rhino uh, get inserted. And if we type block manager, just so that we're following along, you can see that although we don't see anything on the screen, there's a whole bunch of different gem cuts loaded up and ready for us to use. Now all we need is the toolbar. So I'm going to bring up the toolbar command here. And we're going to look for gem blocks and then just place a check mark next to that and hit OK. And so that pulls up this toolbar for us that says gem blocks. And we can we can dock that up here with our other toolbars and select it. And with this, we can click on any of these different shapes of gemstones. Now they're all diamond cut, so, uh, so the library is not super extensive, but it'll get you started. But the first one we have here is a round brilliant. Um, they will start you out at the origin and they'll ask you for a scale factor. So just punch in the diameter that you want. So we could say we want a 2.4 millimeter. And then it's looking for the rotation. If we hold shift, that will snap ortho. And I'm going to go ahead and do it along the X axis here and just hit OK. And so if we wanted to measure that with the dimension tool here real quickly, we could come over here and you can see I have a few of these different snap points on uh, vertex being one of them perpendicular being one. So here's um, here's 2.4 uh, millimeters, just like we asked for. So all that works fine and dandy and saves us a little time. All these do. Uh, if you wanted to dig into them, you can edit them and see that they just ask to load a block from the library and place it here at the center of the of the world. So the one we're interested in is the heart. And so I want to make that five millimeters. So I'll just right click and then I'll hold shift and hit enter. And so here's a, a heart shaped gem right out here in the center. Now, one of the things that these gems have included with them are curves along their girdle lines. And some of these curves I've rebuilt to already be sub D friendly, meaning if you extrude them, they will be sub D objects automatically, which is great. It's a huge time saver so that you're not having to sit and draw these curves and then uh, rebuild them or edit them in some way that makes them a little friendlier for sub D modeling. So with that said, we'll come over to the sub D tools because we're done with the fancy gem blocks toolbar and I'm going to right click and shade this so we can see it a little bit better I'm gonna hold control shift I have to do that to sub select an object these two are grouped together as one block instance and so in order for me to get at that curve I have to control shift and pick down into the group of objects to get at that curve now with that I'll go to the sub D drop down menu and I'm going to extrude that straight. So when this extrudes, it's going to create a sub D object for me. So there we go. So we've started the lip of our bezel here. And with a control and shift selected again, I can double left click this edge. And it will automatically select that full loop of edges as far as it can go. It searches them out end to end and it kind of runs those around. Another way that we could do that 
is we could come up here into the sub D tools tab and we can click on the selection filters. This one happens to be the one for edges. And so when I click that, sorry, this has popped up off my screen. It automatically sets up this filter panel with the right checkbox. It wants the sub objects because an edge is a sub object of the sub D and curves edges. So now instead of holding uh, control and shift, which can turn into a game of finger twister, uh, we can just double left click without having to press anything on the keyboard and it'll select that. One thing to know with this is that we're locked in this sub object edge mode. So it's only when I'm, it's only going to select these objects when I'm clicking around out here. You're not going to get um, the bottom of this gem. We're going to double left click that. And then while we have this, we can, we can pull this scale handle out on the gumball here, which is turned on down here at the bottom. With the gumball on, this is going to scale this 1D, which is not what we want. If we hold shift, that's going to scale 2D. And then if we add, here comes the finger twister. I'm going in with the pinky. If we add control to the mix, we're extruding a whole nother loop of faces out. And here's that face loop. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to double left click. I'm going to start to uh, edit this. I'll pull on it. I'll hold shift so that I get X and Y together. And then I'll add control so that we can extrude. The other way we can extrude when we're going uh, vertical extrusions here is we can use these dots that are on the gumball. Since our edge is still selected, we can grab this blue dot, which is the Z axis or Z axis here, and add a couple rows going down. I'll then spin the thing over a little bit and maybe just grab the arrow. So instead of adding another row, maybe I'll just pull on it and move that row down a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier to make the top lip of the bezel, but on the bottom. So I'll grab this axis. I'll hold shift to get them both going here, and then I'll add control to the mix and get a set of faces. Now I want to do this again. So with that still selected, grab shift control and get another loop of faces here or another edge added. All right, so there's the bottom. So now we need to close this up. So let's take our gem for just a minute, which we can't select. So we have to come up here to this selection filter and we can either turn it off by clicking on some stuff here or we'll just clear it by resetting everything there for us. Now we can select our gem again and I'm gonna go over to the visibility tab and click the lights out. So there we go, so that hides that object and we can bring it right back with the lights back on. So we'll select this, we'll say hide. Oops, I was already running the command there. Uh, now, we can, we can go back to sub D tools here and we can go back into our edge mode and I'll double left click this um, edge loop here. And let's extrude dot down one more and then let's get this going again, shift and then control. So we have that loop and that'll start to create our bearing setting for the for the heart gem. With that edge loop selected, I'm going to hold control and shift and add some more edges. And I want the bottom ones down here. Uh, actually, I don't need control on because I have this, whew, the finger twister. So now I have two edge loops selected here and we can connect those with a really cool tool. This is one of my favorite tools. It's called bridge and it lives right up here. So with the bridge command, we can sort of loft between those two edges. But while we're doing that, we can add edge loops. And I love using my mouse scroll wheel with this and just It's Friday night. Uh, so uh, we're partying hard here. Uh, anyway, so with this, 
we can insert some edges or keep it softer, whatever we want to do. And then we have some control over how tight that is, which this is a bad example for that. But we're going to go ahead and click OK here. And you can see that that makes a nice smooth bezel. But the seat is a little too soft. So we're going to add some harder edges to things. So for that, I'm going to double left click this particular loop. And I'm going to come up here into the toolbar, in, still in sub D here, and there's two here that uh, make things sharper by adding creases to them or removing creases. Since we don't have any creases, we're going to add. So we'll left click this, and that adds a real sharp crease in there. And then I want to do that one more time to this one as well. Whoops, I did it to the outside. I picked the wrong loop there so we'll click on double click on that and there we go and then uh what the heck one more yeah i'll leave that one soft okay so let's grab this and then let's set this more at an angle uh more like a bearing here and let's let's go into ghosted mode i'll right click the perspective viewport there and then you can see our bearing setting is starting to form down inside of our bezel here. So let's go and uh, go back to the visibility tab and let's turn the lights back on for the gym here. And you can see that um, it's a little it's a little deeper than we probably want. So the nice thing is is we can just get in there and get at that edge. And now in ghosted mode, if I if I click anywhere, it's going to go to whatever the closest edges which luckily for us is that one so that's good sometimes it'll want to pick you'll have to be careful you may have to zoom in and click there and then we'll just move that up with the gumball so that it fits well if you want a little bit more angle here we can double click this and i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to scale that out chances are uh this heart in real life is not going to be diamond cut so it's probably going to have more of a belly on it so we'll give this a little more a little more room uh, so we're not grinding it out on the bench. All right, so now we we've got that thing fitting in there pretty well. Let's let's do something about this edge. We talked about crease just a minute ago. Um, I'll come up here again back in the sub D tools and I'll add that crease again. And you can see it's made that real sharp now, but it's intersecting our gym. So I'll just move it. And this is the beauty of sub D is that we can just sit and edit this shape until we're happy with it. I'm going to select just a few of these edges instead of the full ring. I'm just holding shift and clicking on the edges that I want. And I'm going to just pull those out so that the bezel remains thick right there. And that way it's got a nice consistent thickness going all the way around. You could make it uh, however sharp or soft you want it through there. And then I'm going to do the same thing, double left click to this one again. So I'm adding a crease. And then right there we don't want to we don't want to break that off while we're setting it. Maybe eat some Tic Tacs while the setter's setting it. Um, okay, so this is looking pretty good. This is starting to look a little thin. Let me get out of this ghosted mode. This is starting to look a little thinner on this side than up top up here. So what we can do there is we can go into face mode here. And let's grab some of these full faces. Right? Maybe we want all these. This is where it's easy to get consumed by playing with the shapes because we can make those thicker, thinner, uh, more tapered. If you double, if you if you hold down that shift key and double left click, you can get a loop of faces like you did edges, but they they're a little trickier in the fact that an edge can figure out, you know this is where the end is. With a face, it doesn't know if you want to go left and right or up or down. So you have to pick a root face and then hold shift to get a second face. And you double left click the second one and it'll go around. So if we wanted to go up, 
we would do it like that. So a little bit trickier than the edges, but uh, pretty easy once you uh, once you kind of know the secret. In fact, you can see how we have an edge up here, and uh, these aren't equally spaced. So I'll go back to that edge mode, and I'll just drag this down a little bit, and that'll that'll help square up the bottom of that bezel a little bit more. Okay, I think our bezel is good enough for what we're doing right now. Um, I'm going to turn the selection filter back off. And I'm going to select everything and just move it straight up. Now, from our front view over here, let's add a circle. So I'll go back to the standard toolbar, and I'll just click the circle tool. And um, for the center, I'm going to just pass zero for the origin. And the diameter, I'm going to make a 16.5. I'm not going to use radius. I'm going to use diameter. I happen to know that a 16.5 is a US size 6. And so we're going to get that. And we'll say that this is the finger rail curve or the inside of the finger. So we know that if this is going to be a ring, we want to bring our geometry up to sit up there on top of that. And now, since this isn't um, curved to fit, I'm going to go back to that face mode in the selection filter. And I'm going to swipe across the bottom here to select all those faces. Now I'm just editing those bottom faces. And I want to use the transform bend command right here in transform bend. And then the start is going to be right there at the quad. There's the quad snap of the quad here. And I'm going to hold shift for ortho. And then I can start to bend this down, which is super fun. And bend has a symmetry function on it. So I'll say symmetric equals yes. And it'll come along for the ride with us. And then we'll just match that up to our finger rail there. So now we've got a bezel sitting up there on our finger rail. So now we need to make the shank. And um, this is this is really the, my favorite part of, of this ring. So what I'll do, I'll go back to sub D tools and I'll turn the filters off again so that I can click on things. And we're just gonna make a real simple half shank and uh, and we're gonna bridge all this together. It's gonna be cool. So I'll go back to standard. I'm going to do circle, two points. Uh, I've got my quad snap on. Quad is cool. Snaps to all these circles here. Now, let's do, um, if I do this, I'm doing two points. So I'm starting from the outside. I don't want to do this on the center, and I'll show you why. It, if I don't pick anything, this, it's going to start with the center of the circle, which is going to create my circle on the inside of the finger. So it's going to be, it's going to be tight. Somebody's going to be angry when it doesn't fit. So we'll go two point, and then we'll start over here at the three o'clock position. I'm gonna hold shift for that ortho so that I'm going out straight. And I'm just gonna type two for two millimeters. And, and so there we go. Now we can mirror this thing around to the other side, or we can just draw another circle, right? And so since it's easy enough, I'll just say uh, I want two. I'll hold shift and hit enter. All right, so now we've got a profile here at 3 and 9 o'clock. And um, we're just going to come up here to sub D tools once again. And I'm looking for the sweep one rail. All right, and so we're going to say that this is our rail. And then our cross section curves are this one and this one. And I'm going to right click and say OK. We've got freeform selected here, and there's some stuff already pre selected for us. And uh, we can scroll wheel this and play with the resolution of that. But the 8 and 8 looks really good. You can see we can add more rings or fewer rings. I'm going to accept what was there because I think that's real good. And just say OK. Now, this made a closed sweep, and, that, and that's fine. Um, because I really wanted it to go further than you know where our 3 and 9 o'clock was across here. Um, 
but I didn't necessarily want all the way across. So let's take this for a second and we'll go back to visibility and we'll we'll hide those. Holding control and shift together, I'm going to fence select everything in between here. And, oh, I got to be careful. I don't want to take our finger curve with us there. So I held control and deselected that from the selection. So now I've I've deleted, I pressed delete on the keyboard and deleted those faces. And so now the shank opens up. So we'll turn the lights back on here. And let's go over to sub D tools. And now what I want to do is I want to I want to blend all this together. Right? I want to I want to bridge that into that. But there's some rules. Bridge, if we run bridge, it it wants uh, edges or faces. And I don't think it's going to let me do uh, this to this. No, see, it doesn't, it doesn't like it. It wants, it wants you to be consistent in your picking. So um, let's, turn, let's turn this edge filter on again real quick. Let's double left click that. And if we look up here in the command line, it says there's eight sub D edges in the selection. Okay, so we need to match. Let's go faces mode here. And we'll pick U and uh, hold shift and U and U. Okay, and so that should give us three across the top, three across the bottom, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to press delete on the keyboard and just punch a hole right in the side of that thing. Now let's go back to edges. We'll double left click. I'm going to hold shift and uh, double left click over here. Now let's run that bridge command. So now you can see the bridge command is like, oh, it's so great. It just made this really smooth transition uh, between these two shapes. And if we wanted that tighter, we can add more segments, but we don't. We want it just one, just like that. And now let's, um, let's work on getting this thing to fit the... Uh, to fit the finger rail since it's pulled off a little bit here. Now we can come up with this or we can just bring this down. We can double click that and we can just bring these down to fit nicely right on the finger. And so that adjusts real well. Now we could repeat that whole process with the other side, but there's a cool feature in sub D called reflect and it lives right next to my my favorite tool which is bridge reflect is right here and so if we run reflect it asks us hey what are we putting this on and we're going to say we're going to reflect this object and it wants to know which axis it's going to split the thing down and mirror it for us so y if we look at our little indicator down here the green is y we want to cut right down the middle there so we'll say the y-axis, and then the side we want to keep is obviously the side that we've worked on. So we just pick on this side of that green line. And then uh, the last one, uh, the snap style automatic, we just right-click through that. And you can see that it, it goes ahead, and it mirrors this over, and then it shades this other side a darker color. And the reason why it shades it that darker color is because you can't, do anything to this side. Whatever you do uh, gets erased. You have to work on the side that you kept. So any adjustments that we do over here automatically get mirrored for us over there. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo uh, that action there. But that is um, <laughs> that is great. So now we could sit and fiddle with this thing more if we wanted to. Uh, maybe maybe we went back into face mode and we lowered these a little bit for a render to make it look a little more set. And so we could go and say we're finished with that. In properties, we can hit the paint tube here and make some simple materials for this thing. So I'll say I want to add a new material. I'm going to pick metal from the list. And this looks great already. So I'll just right click it and assign it to my object. And then I'll come over here and I'll put us in a, 
We'll start with rendered mode. Um, this is a cool mode to work in, uh, or that I like to work in. And then for our center here, let's do a ruby since it's a heart. We'll say, uh, let's do a new material. And we'll pick a gem from the list. And then the type we'll say is a ruby. And we'll right click the material again and say assign to our object here. Now, in this particular mode, the the gem materials look very uh, transparent. If we go to uh, the ray traced mode, uh, you can see that it creates a much fancier render uh, and the gem looks much more proper. Uh, we could go back to this and we could say, maybe it's not super white. Maybe it's got a little bit more metal tone to it. Uh, or perhaps it's yellow gold, All right? That's a little, I don't know where you're buying your metal from, but uh, it's pretty carried. There we go. So, um, so here we go. There's, uh, there's also some other things. We can see the curves in here. I may have turned those on. So I'll go up to display and press the monitor icon here. And that pops up over here. And this has some check boxes for things that we may or may want, not want to show in our in our render and curves happen to be one of those things and so there we go that pretty quickly renders that out uh, there's some more tricks that we could get into in a different video but that's the easy one now if you wanted to go back and work on this a little bit more we could go back to rendered and when it's real transparent like this in this mode, I tend to change it from gym to custom. And then when I change it to custom, I get a few more settings. So I get a little more control over the IOR, the index of refraction for the, for the Ruby. And I also get this transparency slider, which um, has a little bit more effect here in this particular mode. So if I'm working in this mode, this to me is a faster mode to work in. And so um, you can still see that symmetry is active and that red line is our symmetry axis here. But we can come in and control shift select and still pull on this thing and continue to refine the shape until we're super happy with it. But anyway, I hope this video helps you get started with sub D in Rhino 7. And um, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.